Hi there, in the last video we looked at dynamic code analysis. So in this video we're going to explore static code analysis using the LAVI VI Analyzer Toolkit. And just as a reminder, all of the code you'll see on screen will be posted on my GitHub page, so you can download that if you want to play along at home. So let's get started by defining what static code analysis actually is. So what is static code analysis? Well, it's a technique that we can use to compare our source code, written in LabVIEW, to pre-established criteria for style, organization, and quality. And the way that static code analysis deviates from dynamic code analysis is that with static code analysis, we don't need to compile or execute the application to perform the analysis. So with static code analysis, we can take our style guidelines, which might look a little bit like this from the NI website, and we can ensure that our code adheres to the LabVIEW style checklist that you see on the screen. We could go through all 100 or so items in the LabVIEW style checklist for every VI to ensure that we're maintaining the best programming practices. However, that's going to take a really long time. Instead, we can automate the process using the LabVIEW VI Analyzer Toolkit. With this toolkit, we can perform static code analysis to improve code quality and readability. We can utilize over 90 tests for automated code reviews. We could create custom tests to meet our own personalized style guides. And as well as being used by individuals, it's perfect for use as a team to ensure that everyone in the team maintains a high quality standard of code. Let's open up LabVIEW and see it in action. To introduce VI Analyzer, I've written a VI that will plot a quadratic equation on the graph and solve the equation to give two values of x when y equals 0. So let's plot a really simple equation of y equals 1x squared. So I'll just put a 1 in the a and click run. And we get a very simple parabola and the answers returned are 0 and negative 0. And so everything here seems to be correct. Let's try a different equation of 1x squared plus 6x minus 9 and see what we get. So the parabola looks a little bit different and we get two answers of 0 0.2 and negative 6.2. And if we zoom in onto the x-axis, that appears to be correct. However, let's do some static code analysis using VI Analyzer to find out what LAVI thinks of the code. To do this, I'm going to go to the Tools menu, and that could be the Tools menu on the front panel block diagram or in your project. Go down to VI Analyzer and Analyze VIs. This has opened up the Select Task, and for now, let's just analyze the current VI called quadraticformula.vi and click Next. In this window, we can choose the types of tests that we want to execute. So let's select tests for the block diagram, complexity tests, documentation, front panel, general tests, and within general tests, we're going to look at the file properties, and then VI metrics, so the number of nodes inside our VIs and diagram size in general. So now we've selected all of these tests, let's analyze this VI. So this should only take a couple of seconds. You can see that it's going quite quickly and soon we're going to have a report of all of those tests. And you can see that in the simple VI of Quadratic Formula, VI Analyzer found 13 items that could be a potential issue. And VI Analyzer has sorted these tests into different categories of high, the standard category in the center, and low ranked tests at the bottom. Now we've got a warning sign for unused code, but if you look at our block diagram, I don't see where that would be. So let's double click and it says the square function has none of its outputs wired. So this is a case where it might look like this square function has been wired. However, if I move a wire, we'll see that the output isn't actually wired. So VI Analyzer has actually found a bug in my code, which means I wasn't getting the correct results. So let's rewire x squared and look at what else VI Analyzer picked up. We've got that auto error handling is enabled and for released code, having automatic error handling enabled is going to reduce performance. And you can see there are some other items here as well. I want to look at parallelizable loops because VI Analyzer has found that these two for loops can safely be parallelized, which means to execute asynchronously. So let's enable for loop parallelization by right-clicking the for loop, 
configure iteration parallelism and enabling it. And we can do that for both loops. VI Analyzer has also found some misspelled words, some wire bends that shouldn't be there, and also some backwards wires. So let's click on this wire. And it's seen that the iteration terminal count has been wired backwards. It's picked up that we haven't customized our icon. It's seen that debugging is still enabled and this VI doesn't have a description. So for a VI like this, I would recommend going through each of these items and fixing them in your code and then running the VI analyzer again. So that's what I'm going to do now. After going through all of the VI analyzer results, I'm now at the satisfying point where I'm getting no failures. So now I'm much more prepared for a code review or even to release the code. However, according to my own style guidelines, this VI still does too much functionality as it's solving an equation and plotting it to a graph. So I could make a custom test to stop me from having more than one for loop on the top level block diagram. To create a custom test, you can go to tools, VI analyzer, create new test, and then follow the pop-up wizard. However, before doing that, I would highly recommend you head over to the VI analyzer enthusiast group. On my last count, this group has over 50 tests that you can download and use for free. And the instructions on how to use them are in the group as well. In my opinion, the main issue with VI Analyzer is actually remembering to use it. However, to help us out with that issue, we can actually run VI Analyzer programmatically using the API that it ships with. On the screen, we can see a really simple example, which I pulled up from the NI example finder. To analyze our own code programmatically, we will have to create our own VI Analyzer config file. However, we can do that really simply through the VI Analyzer startup tool. Once we've made a VI Analyzer config file, we could even call VI Analyzer as part of a build routine using the LabVIEW command line interface. This way, you could run VI Analyzer every time you commit your code to your repository. I hope you found this video helpful and if you did, please like, comment and subscribe and I'll see you next time.